RT has been assessing the grim consequences of Ankara's bloody crackdown against Turkish Kurds. Previously, we showed exclusive footage from the city of Jizre, destroyed by government forces during a military operation. We have been seeing shocking reports of the Turkish government's crackdown against Kurds in the country's southeast. The town of Jizre is where the Turkish military launched an offensive last September. This looks like Aleppo, it looks like Syria here, but we're actually in, we're in Turkey. It's mad to think this has happened. An RT crew travelled from Jizre to another mostly Kurdish city, Diyarbakir. Turkey ended its anti-Kurdish operation there only two days ago. RT's William Whiteman went to a demonstration where people gathered to demand information about their missing relatives. There he talked to the parents of one of the victims of the crackdown. Friday prayers in Diyarbakir. In a further effort to quash Kurdish dissent, Turkish authorities now require imams to read government-approved sermons. Thousands of local Kurds are protesting this move by boycotting the city's main mosque and holding prayers in a nearby park. The imam speaks both Kurdish and Turkish, condemning the government's actions. There's helicopters flying overhead, and all the time we are hearing explosions and gunfire, which are coming from the uh, military operation, which is going on uh, just down the road there. Little over 500 metres away is the city district of Sur. Here, Turkish security services have continuously waged a military operation against the Kurdistan Workers' Party, also known as the PKK, and its affiliated groups as part of the ongoing government crackdown across the region. A mother weeps for her 17-year-old daughter, Rosarin. She was killed in a military bombardment of the Sur district, where she was visiting with friends in early January. With access to the area cut off by the fighting, her body has never been recovered. Sadly, she is one of many such cases. At a nearby memorial for the missing dead, we find Rosarine's father, Mustafa. We saw the news of your death reported on state TV and the internet. The reports included Rosalind's ID information discovered beside her body. Through hunger strikes, the families here managed to pressure the government into returning just two of the missing bodies. But the condition they were in was appalling. Of the bodies that have been recovered, parts of their flesh and internal organs had been eaten by stray dogs. The bodies were riddled with thousands of bullet holes. It seems that the military continued to shoot them long after they were dead. They were only identifiable through DNA testing. We spoke to the co-presidents of the local pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party branch about the plight of these affected families. Of the local residents killed in Sir, 14 bodies are yet to be recovered. They have been lying in the open for a long time, first under the siege and now under the curfew. Without the bodies, the families have been unable to hold funerals. They have been denied the right to give their loved ones a traditional Islamic burial. The government is violating human rights and the sanctity of religious traditions. Every Saturday in Diyarbakir, families of people who had disappeared during the peak of the Turkish-Kurdish conflict in the 80s and 90s gather to demand information on their missing loved ones. Now they are being joined by families of new victims. Rosarin's parents are among them. In the ceasefire of recent years, there was hope for the future. All that these devastated parents can hope for now is that one day their daughter's body will be returned, and for whatever peace that may bring them. From Diabaka, William Whiteman, RT. Well, we've asked several human rights organisations for their reaction to our report, and their responses have been cautious. Amnesty International declined our request to, request to comment, while Human Rights Watch said they were still looking into the allegations, but are not available to comment at present. Turkey has claimed it will continue its operations against so-called Kurdish militias to ensure peace in the region. Washington says Ankara has the right to fight terrorists, but only within international law. While we have certainly acknowledged Turkey's right to defend itself against terrorists, and the PKK is a terrorist organization that we recognize, uh, we have also, and I've said many times from this podium, um, 
called on them to do so in accordance with international law and obligations that they that they have. 